Welcome back, everybody. You know, last time we uh, we got to talking about this TK calendar thing. Yeah. It's a Python library, and uh, it's for making these really, really nice looking calendars, mm -hmm. right, in your TK enter application. That's right. And uh, well, today we're going even further. Okay. We're going to take a deep dive into some of the more uh, advanced features Wait, of yeah. TCAT calendar, stuff that's really going to save you a bunch of time. Yeah. And we're going to look at how it streamlines things. Okay. So not just like showing dates, but, you know, messing with them. Oh, good. Okay. Doing calculations and even, you know, Ooh, yeah. making things look a little, a little snazzier. Okay. So like imagine um, you're making an app okay. where people need to put in dates, mm -hmm. like uh, scheduling something or, yeah. I don't know, marking down deadlines. Right. If you were just doing TKent, mm -hmm. you'd have to like code that all yourself. Absolutely. Like getting input. Right. And then making sure it's a real date. Validating. And then making it look right. Formatting, yep. That could get really messy. Oh yeah, it'd be a lot of code. Yeah. And that's where TK Calendar comes in. Okay. It's like, instead of all that, right. you just import the library. Okay. Make a date entry widget. Uh -huh. And you're basically done. Really? If you don't, If you don't tell it anything specific, it just defaults to today's date. Wow, so you can have a working calendar in your app like that. It's that easy. That's that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. What if what if I wanted to be more specific? Okay. Like um, I want to set a date for something. Okay. Like a, a birthday reminder. Right. How would how would I do that? So for that, you would use the set date yeah. method. Yeah. You can basically pre-fill the calendar with whatever date you want. Oh, that's handy. It's really useful when you need to kind of guide users towards specific dates. Yeah. Last time. I was really interested in the different ways you could actually like oh yeah get the date from the user right we talked about string variables um events even yeah. using button clicks mm -hmm. can we go into how those work of course so basically each method gives you a different level of control okay and it kind of depends on how your application set up right you know what works best for you mm -hmm. so for example um you could use something called binding a function okay to the date entry selected event right and that's triggered every time a user picks a date on the calendar. So it's like, ah, uh, it's like setting a trap. Kind of, yeah. And when they pick a date, it springs up and grabs the information. You got it, yeah. Got it. So it's a really cool way to trigger specific actions right. based on how a user interacts with the calendar. Okay. And once you've got that date, yeah. a TK calendar gives you this thing called the get date method. Okay. And that gives you a date time date object. And that's where things get interesting. That's where it gets really powerful. Yeah. Because yeah. now there's all these things you can do. Oh. You can format the date in like different ways. Like yeah. you were saying with that stref time thing. Yeah. <laughs> to make the dates look, I don't know. Fancy. Fancy. Right. But the date time dot date objects are, they're more than that. Okay. You can use them to calculate stuff. Really? Compare dates. Huh. Even more, uh, more complicated things. Okay, so like like what kind of calculations? So let's say you're building a project management app or something. Okay. Where people need to pick a start date mm. and an end date for like a task. Right. With TK Calendar, you can actually yeah. calculate the difference between those two. So you so you mean like you don't have to like manually count the days. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it just does it for you. That's that's pretty neat, especially when you're dealing with Especially for yeah, like big projects. A lot of dates. With like long timelines right right and if you need to be even more specific okay with the time stuff yeah you can use this library called relative delta relative delta yeah okay it goes beyond just the difference between dates and lets you work with like years months oh. even things like leap years so so wait could you use that to like figure out someone's age you got it based on their birthday exactly wow it takes all that stuff into account that's really cool it's really precise yeah. really flexible for all those time calculations yeah. but let's let's talk about something a little more visual okay remember i said decay calendar can make things look a bit snazzier yeah yeah i want to hear about that okay so imagine you're building like an event planning app okay wouldn't it be cool if the users could see mm -hmm. the dates they pick yeah. Highlighted right on the calendar. That would be nice. Well, with TK Calendar, you can do that. Really? Yeah. You can use this method mm -hmm. called CalEvent Create to mark specific dates, mm -hmm. even color code them. Oh, wow. So they represent different types of events. So if I was planning like a big conference, yeah. I could like put the main days in bold. Exactly. And then like color code all the different workshops. Yeah, yeah. And just have it all right there. That's the idea. That's that's way better than just a list of dates. 
it's a lot more intuitive. Yeah. Way more engaging. Yeah. And you can even add custom data to those events. Oh, really? Like, uh, yeah, what? Like descriptions. Okay. Little notes. Well, anything you need, really. Uh, so it's like each date is like a, a little container. Yeah, like a little box. For more stuff. For extra info. That's clever. Yeah, it makes yeah. things super interactive yeah. and informative. Yeah. But there's there's another part of TK Calendar. Okay. You haven't talked about styling? Oh, right. You said we can change how it looks. Exactly. Right. So TK Calendar works really well with this thing oh, called yeah. TTK Style. All right. And it gives you tons of control okay. over how your calendar looks. Like yeah. you change colors, okay. fonts. Mm -hmm. You even applied these things called TTK themes. TTK themes. Okay. To cool. make your whole app look consistent. So we could make the calendar match, like, the branding of our app. Exactly. Wow. It can either blend right in uh -huh. or be, like, a really key visual element. Right. And on top of all that, okay. TK Calendar is built with accessibility in mind. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It works with TKinter's accessibility features. Okay. So it's easy to use with a keyboard, uh. and it's compatible with screen readers. That's great. So people who need those tools can still use the calendar. Exactly. Anyone can use it. That's important. It's super important. Yeah. So yeah, we've seen how TK Calendar can make dates easier, mm -hmm. how it lets you do powerful calculations, yeah. add those visual elements, mm -hmm. and it's all accessible. Right. It's a really powerful tool. It sounds really versatile. It is. But how are people actually using it? Like in real projects? Oh, you're in luck. Okay. In the next segment, we're going to look at some really cool case studies that show you what TK Calendar can really do. Okay, I'm ready. Let's see. TK Calendar in action. All right, let's start with something we all know. Okay. Booking a vacation rental. Oh, yeah. So you know those websites mm -hmm. where you search for places to stay? Yeah. Imagine instead of having those drop-down menus, Yeah. you have a TK Calendar widget. Ooh. Okay. Right there on the page. So you'd pick your arrival date. Right. And then, like... Drag to pick the departure. Exactly. And the calendar highlights the whole range. Yeah, it's way more intuitive. That is way better. And clicking through a bunch of menus. Right. And what's cool is yeah. behind the scenes, the website's using TK Calendar yeah. to figure out how long you're staying. Okay. Update the price and even check if it's available. So it does all that automatically. Just like that. Wow. It makes booking so much easier. That's that's a great example. Mm -hmm. What other uh, What other cool ways are people using it? Okay, how about this? A financial tracking app. Okay. And you use TK Calendar to see, like, your spending habits oh, okay. over time. So I could pick a date range. Right. And see, like, a graph of everything I spent. Exactly. Oh, that would be really useful. Yeah, you could see those months where, yeah. I don't know, you spent way too much on coffee. Oh, yeah, definitely. Whatever it is. It makes the data way easier to understand. It's all about making it clear. Yeah. And Key Calendar helps with that. Right. We could even use that that Calvin create thing, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. To mark specific dates mm -hmm. and add extra info. Right, so imagine like uh -huh. a project management tool. Okay. Each date on the calendar is a day in the project. Uh -huh. You could use Calvin create to mark like Ooh, yeah. milestones, okay. deadlines, tasks, anything. And color code them. Oh yeah. So sure. it's like an yeah. interactive calendar exactly. on managing the whole project. That's the idea. That's, that's amazing. And honestly, that's just scratching the surface. Really? T calendar can be used in healthcare. Okay. Education, even scientific research. Wow. I had no idea. There's so much you can do with it. It's amazing how one little tool can do so much. I know. It's pretty cool. Well, I feel like I've learned a lot about TK Calendar today. Me too. It's way more than just a simple calendar. Yeah. It's a really powerful way yeah. to make applications better. More intuitive, more efficient. Exactly. So if anyone's working on a project with dates or time, mm -hmm. you got to check out TK Calendar. It might be exactly what you need. Well, that's it for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I hope you learned some cool stuff. Until next time. Keep coding. And keep those calendars organized.